Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning Father. Everyone. Who and what is this Jesus character? Mm -hmm. What is Jesus? It's a real question that the church has wrestled with for its entire existence. Countless councils have debated minor, what we might think, can, uh, theological points. What is he consubstantial? Is he also God? Is he created? These sorts of questions, while being very important, divorce us from some of the important theological ideas that Gospels like John present to us. Jesus wept. You see, Jesus walked to meet his best friend and uh, two of his best friends and their brother, who was also his best friend. He was told, hey, he's sick, come and visit. Jesus put it off. Jesus came and he had already died. I know that John presents to us this idea that it's a plan, that it was willed by God, that he would die so that, quote, he would be made to glorify God. But if we think about the way the church has landed on understanding Jesus, we see what? Jesus is God. Jesus is human. Have we ever, have you ever, made the mistake of putting something off until it's too late? Have you ever done something by the time that not having done it had a lot of consequences? Jesus, in today's gospel reading, presents to us that reality. And something that's so pivotal to it is the fact that Jesus wept. You see, we often read this reading at funerals to know that, yes, even though you are to be risen again, it's okay to cry. I think there's something so much more here. While that's there, obviously, and it's important for us to know that God identifies with our grief, perhaps it's most important to know that God identifies with the way we exist period, with our inability sometimes to do something because it's hard, with our inaction that causes important consequences. So I'm going to give you a very real example, and I want you to ponder it. Think about what does it mean to be one who doesn't act. You see, countless people who were Jewish during the reign of Hitler, early especially, were crying out, hey, help us. Something's going on. We're in trouble. And what was done? Nothing. Countless Jewish people died and were saved, yes, but later, right? The inaction early on had consequences. Well, you say, Father Brett, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that now. I would listen. I would do something. But what about over the last few years as our immigration policies have changed? How many voices have cried out, these orange jumpers that you're putting me in? These cells that you're locking me in with no AC and, air, and heating. These cells that you're locking me in wherein I share a toilet, a bucket, with six or seven people. How many of those voices have we missed? It's our inaction that might have resulted in that. And I'm not saying, you know, Father Brett isn't saying, hey, it's your fault. No, he's not saying that. Rather, what I'm saying is, it's not Becky's fault. It's a societal sin in which we as the Catholic Church understand to be pivotal to the kingdom of God in terms of getting rid of those. The kingdom of God, of God can't be ushered in, as Jesus says, without change. 
without leadership, ruling change, without policy change. The conversion of me equals the conversion of society if we're really looking at the way Jesus wants us to be. And you see, Jesus says, I know, well, Martha, apology, says, I know he will rise in the resurrection of the last day, referring to Lazarus. She knows that, just like I know, that in the last day there will be no pain, no tears. Re Revelation promises, promises us that, right? God's promises, you see, Ezekiel says, and emphasizes God's promises, that they are serious, they're legit. But what's our role in the ushering in of those promises? You see, Martha's continued advocacy perturbs Jesus. The, the people around him, that continued advocacy perturbs him. And I like to think that perhaps it's not an angry perturb, as much as it is a, man, she's right, I need to act. Listening to the voice of those of Martha who has been hurt, listening to the voices of those who have been hurt in society should yield action, even sometimes from God. So as we look at the dual natures of Jesus, we are left with this very real picture that Jesus' humanity and Jesus' divinity are intertwined in ways we can't understand, and that means something for us, because his humanity still has an impact. And it's his humanity, perhaps even more seriously, that's called on in that moment. It's not as much, you see, God understands death. God gets it, right? That's what we hear when he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will never die. That's the godly answer. But the human response is Jesus wept. It was the human in him that called him to action through his divine origin. And in that same way, our humanity, transformed by our baptism, our covenants with God is called into action likewise. So who is Jesus? Well, Jesus is the one who calls us to act. And so together, let's do that. Amen? Amen.